Only a very dumb person would try to pretend to be smart. Wait, what? Today, I will be talking about how to find an open channel for repeaters, for new repeaters. GMRS repeaters, to be specific. And by open channel for a new repeater, I mean if you are a pillar of your community and you have decided to install or build a repeater for your area, how do you go about finding an open, usable, available channel? And who owns those channels? How do you decide what channel to use? And what if all the channels are in use? But even if you never plan to build your own repeater, stick around because you might learn something. It is inevitable. Just last night, I received this question from Jeff Lee. Jeff Lee. He submitted his question via my Ask Randy webpage. You can submit your questions there as well. And he says, I decided to put up a repeater on GMRS. Now I have another GMRS licensee complaining I'm interfering with his repeater. Who has priority, if any? I would like to change frequencies, but I'm afraid I may interfere with other users. Well, Jeff Lee, if that's your real name, it's funny you should ask this because just recently I have run into the same issue. I, we, we being the small group, the small GMRS group in my area, just added an additional repeater to our little repeater network that we have in the Southern California area. You can read more about our repeaters and even see how to listen in and talk on our repeaters via the internet by reading that page right there. By adding this new repeater to our existing small network of repeaters, we've extended our range from the Inland Empire area of Southern California far, far into the Los Angeles County area. Beautiful Los Angeles County area of Southern California. But what we did not realize is that there is another smaller repeater covering a much smaller area in that new coverage area. And even though our repeater and that repeater are using different tones, our new repeater is still interfering with their transmissions. So who has priority? Who owns that channel? Whose channel is it? In the GMRS world, according to the FCC, who likes to think that they own the airwaves, all channels, all the GMRS channels, are open for any licensed GMRS user to use, or even FRS users on FRS radios. They're all open. Anyone can use them. And because there are only eight channels that you can use repeaters on in the GMRS world, there is a big potential for conflict conflict. Now in the ham world, there are frequency coordinators whose job it is. I don't know who pays them. I don't know where they come from. Nobody cares. You don't need to leave a comment. Their job is to maintain the harmony in frequencies and make sure that when somebody puts up a new ham repeater, it's not using a frequency that's already in use. And in the ham world, they're not limited to only eight repeater channels like we are in the GMRS world. So this is rarely an issue. Those ham guys have it so easy. But in the GMRS world with our scant eight repeater channels to choose from, there are no frequency coordinators. There is no frequency coordination. Everyone must get along and play nicely together. But in the GMRS world, the one very important thing to remember is that according to the FCC, nobody owns any channel. Nobody. Nobody has a right to one channel more than anybody else. Everyone must play nicely together. So that instead of this, you have this. So if you're planning on putting up a GMRS repeater, this is what you do. Hopefully before you put the repeater up. First, listen to all of the GMRS repeater channels. Listen to them with your radio for a week or so to see if any of them are already in use. If they are, scratch those potential ones off your list. Then search mygmrs.com to see if there's any repeaters listed in your area. Mygmrs.com does not list every repeater, but it will give you an idea if there's anything out there, confirm that it's still active if something is listed, and if it is, so after listening to all the channels for a week or so and scratching off any potential channels that are already in use, and after checking mygmrs.com and scratching off any more potentially in use channels, that should leave you with a shorter list of channels to choose from. You then 
take that list of shorter candidates for your new GMRS repeater and you listen to those channels for another few days or a week or so just to make sure that they're not obviously in use. From your now shorter list of potential channels to choose from, you then pick one, the one that you think is the least busy. You then, very importantly, cross your fingers, say a prayer to the almighty Xenu, and put your repeater up using that channel that you think is not in use. And that is exactly what we did when we put our new repeater up, and yet we still ran into a conflict with another repeater owner. Now that repeater doesn't interfere with our repeater, we can't even hear it. That's why we didn't know it was there. We were listening. They're so small and have such a small coverage area. We didn't even know it existed. But our repeater, because it's up in a higher position on the mountain, covers a much wider area, it pretty much squashes them when they try to talk. So much so that if they're talking on their repeater and somebody comes along and says, hey, can you hear me now on our new repeater? It crushes them even though they're using different tones. The interference is so bad that it basically renders their repeater unusable if anyone is talking on our repeater. So now what? In GMRS, as I previously mentioned, nobody owns any particular channel, not a regular channel or a repeater channel. Nobody has the right to any particular channel over anyone else even if they were there using it first, even if they claim that it's their channel, even if they threaten to contact the FCC. Nobody owns any particular GMRS channel more than anyone else does. We all own the channels. So you're going to have to work it out amongst yourselves like grown-ups. This is why the ham radio guys have it so easy. This allows them to avoid all this human contact. If you're the new guy, generally the polite thing to do is to just move along and choose another channel. But you do not have to, and nobody can force you to, no matter what they tell you. So you have to work it out and figure out who's going to move, or the other option is to just live with the interference that you cause each other. You can be polite neighbors, which is what we're doing with our new repeater. The old repeater that was on that frequency in that area before us, they generally only use it during certain hours of the day, so our users just don't use it those hours of the day. We don't have to do this, but we're being polite. It's the polite thing to do. And this way, we should be able to live in harmony with our GMRS neighbor. But in your area, maybe your GMRS neighbor does not want to play nice. And maybe for whatever reason, you don't want to move. And in that case, when push comes to shove, it may just be that the laws of nature take over and whichever repeater is bigger, stronger, and more powerful, wins. The other weaker, lesser repeater will have to find another channel to use, leaving the bigger, stronger one to dominate that channel forever until someone else comes along with an even bigger, better, stronger repeater and sharts all over you the way you did to that other guy. So Jeff Lee, in summary, choose carefully, monitor the frequencies for a week or so, and find one that as best you can tell is not in use, if it turns out it is in use, work it out like gentlemen with your GMRS neighbor because nobody owns the GMRS channels. If you have questions about anything that you have seen on your screen in the last several minutes, leave a comment below.